Yes. Well, here we are. Number one, movement one. Take one. Everyone. We are the Eibler Quartet, and today we come to you from the comforts of our own living rooms. This is Margaret. She plays the cello. This is Pat. He plays viola. This is me, Julie. I play violin. And this is Aislinn. She also plays the violin. We were supposed to have been doing a launch concert for a project we've been working on for a while. So, of course, we're not playing any concerts anymore, but we still wanted to share with you what we've been doing. So we decided to make a little video for you in case you're bored at home. I'm sure none of you are bored at home, are you? If you've been to one of our Eibler Quartet concerts lately, chances are you've seen us and heard us perform a quartet by our new BFF, Franz Aspelmeyer. You know, so many people think there were only three composers who wrote music in the classical era, Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. I love their music, we all love their music, but there are many other composers that wrote beautiful music that were friends and colleagues of these three whose music inspired them or was inspired by them. And one of the missions of the Eibler Quartet is to find this music that has been neglected and lost over the years, collecting dust in libraries, and bring this music back to life. We read through a lot of music, and some of it finds its way onto this concert or another. And every once in a while, we meet a kindred musical spirit whose music touches us in a deep and lasting way. Aspel Meyer is our latest discovery, who I think you will love too. His music is truly beautiful. I think we first got serious about the idea of recording these quartets by Aspel Meyer after we performed one of them in a recital in Toronto a few years ago. Uh, the recital program that night was something pretty typical for the Eibler Quartet. It featured some lesser-known composers alongside some heavyweights from the 18th century. That night we played uh, Os uh, Ospelmeyer, Von Hall, and Haydn and Beethoven. And that night, because it was in Toronto, some of our close friends, who were also string quartet players, came to the concert. And I remember being quite surprised afterwards that the Ospelmeyer was the piece that was singled out by a few of my colleagues as being a particular delight to them. After the concerts, we had drinks and a meal together, uh, the Eibler Quartet, and I remember discussing at length uh, the fact that our friends had been so drawn to this Ospelmeyer, and we decided that it would be a good idea to learn more of his music and investigate his musical language more fully. What does it take to get through the rigorous Eibler Quartet evaluation process? Well, there are four main things. Number one, the music has to have good bones. And Aspel Meyer's music has great structure, it's concise, it's imaginative at times, and he knows when he's got a good idea, but he also knows when to quit while he's ahead. Number two. It's gotta have good minuets. The Aspelmeyer minuets are all great, and I especially have a soft spot for the E major minuet, which has these huge contrasts between the minuet and the trio, almost um, Beethovenian um, in style. Number three. The quartets have to have a beautiful and touching slow movement so that I can emote.
Number four, the music has to be interesting and compelling enough so that we will still like it and each other after we play it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. Franz Aspelmeyer was born in 1728, the son of a dancing master who likely was the first teacher for violin and composition for the young man. Most of the information that we have about Aspelmeyer we deduce from court records, church records, uh, proceedings of various associations. If there is a massive trove of uh, information about Aspelmeyer journals and letters, we have yet to discover them. He's a rough contemporary of Haydn's whom he met uh, as a young man in the orchestra of Count Mortzin uh, when Haydn moved there in 1759. It was Haydn's first real job, in a sense. The orchestra disbanded after a couple of years. Haydn went off to Esterhazy. Ospelmeyer went to Vienna and became a composer primarily of dance music, although he wrote a great deal of chamber music, symphonies, and the first German language melodrama. The two remained in close contact through their lives. There's an element in Ospelmeyer's music that really touches the heart, and it calls to mind for me always Robert Schumann, which might sound a little bit strange, but there's a quirkiness and a, a slight idiosyncrasy to the music that I find extremely appealing. The different voices that the Ibro Quartet brings to life, for example, Von Hall, or Josef Edler von Eibler, our namesake, really helped to complete the picture of what the classical style was becoming in the time. So we're uh, here, and... Uh... It's the and us that are going to kill you. <laughs> How did the Eibler Quartet get started? Well, in around 2004, uh, Pat came across some music, I, or maybe you'd had it for a That's while. That's total rubbish. Okay. <laughs> I have this, <laughs> this music for years and wanted to record it. Okay, okay so let's start it again. Music. Let's start again. Cut. <laughs> How did the Ivory Quartet get started? Well, I think it began, Pat, with some music that you found. I had come across uh, the Opus One string quartets of uh, Joseph Leopold, Edward von Eibler, many, many years ago, and actually played one of them with uh, the von Swieten Quartet, a period instrument quartet I played with in Boston. But I thought we had, I thought we had missed a treasure, and so we uh, got together. Julie Hayes and Margaret and I got together in 2004. Right, and our first idea was to read the quartets and see if we liked them, and we did. And then we decided, well, we should have a project and record the quartets, perform them and record them. And we did start as a project, not as a string quartet. It's String quartet, it's very fraught. I mean, it's the great, the great ensemble, of course, but it's also pretty fraught. So when we got started, we said, this is the Eibner project. We didn't even use the Q word for a while. Yeah, we didn't want to make any kind of long-term commitment to keep playing together. So we thought we could survive uh, three or four concerts and a recording of these three quartets, which we did. And 16 <laughs> years later, we're still here. And uh, seven or eight recordings later. That's right. And lots and lots of concerts and lots of teaching and lots of, lots of experience under the experience water under the bridge. Every group faces all kinds of challenges. I mean, the particular ones for us are time, right? I mean, we don't all live in the same city, and so there's there are challenges schedule-wise. Just getting us all in the same place at the same time can be a bit of a bit of a trick. I suppose another challenge that the group um, has, and a lot of string quartets have this challenge, which is that um, two of us, Margaret and I, are married. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, I, I don't particularly think of that as a challenge, but maybe we should leave that over to uh, Julian Aislin to uh, have an idea. <laughs> to comment on that. Ah! Bah, 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 bah. What? Pat and Margaret are married? Aislin, did you know that they were married? Pat and Margaret 
do I know a Pat and Margaret? We are incredibly lucky to have an amazing recording team. This is Dan, our producer. He is so calm, focused, and tirelessly committed to helping us do our best. He hears everything, and we trust him completely to understand our vision. Best of all, he knows when to kick our butts and when to give us extra flowery compliments. This is Ron, our wonderful recording engineer. Like Dan, he is one of the very special people in this world. So good at what he does, but also incredibly patient and kind. Ron is always there for us, totally dedicated to helping us create magic with the simple click of a button or a readjustment of a microphone. What's up? You with me? Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> How you been this week? What's, what's been going on? I'll tell you about We've missed okay. you. Four is that same. Four to four. Movement three. Every click. Take one. When we arrived at the studio to record this Aspelmeyer project together, we knew that the schedule we had before us was ambitious. There was so much material to cover and not a lot of time in which to do it. The quartet is one of the finest I've ever worked with and the musicianship, the technical proficiency, the attention to detail, the preparation that was done ahead of time meant that we could come in with laser sharp focus and high levels of intense concentration and complete something that on paper seemed almost impossible. It was an incredible experience and it's a real joy to collaborate with the Eibler Quartet. Don't worry Dan, I'm not going to freak out about playing this one a thousand times. I love this one. It's not as cheerful as the other. <laughs> so I can play it endlessly. Okay. I'm going to regret that I'm sure. But. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna find out. <laughs> That's true. So we're ready for a full one. Very good. Thank you. Here we are. There are lots of steps, of course, to making any CD. Uh, there's the preparation on our part. There's the time in the studio. There's the time that. The producer spends making a first edit and making all the choices, and then there's the time we spend listening to it, and then the time I spend editing it with Ron Searles. Editing with Pat and Dan and the Eidler Quartet is a remarkable experience. They have such a clear idea uh, before coming into the studio of what their interpretation is going to be, and in the final editing and mixing part of it, um, we are just sharpening the focus and uh, and bringing uh, to the listener the clearest possible representation of what they want the audience to hear and, uh, and what's in the music. And it's just, uh, it's always a pleasure. Our final goal is to capture our understanding of these works in the best way that we can, with the time allowed and the resources available. Live concerts are a different kind of fun, but this is meant to have the value of a lasting document of our understanding of the music. Mm -hmm.